Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Trap, a Japanese thriller from 1996. Now this is actually the third entry in a film franchise that has multiple names. The English title seems to be the Mike Yokohama franchise, which includes The Most Terrible Time in My Life from 1993, The Stairway to the Distant Past from 1995, the Trap from 1996, and A Forest with No Name from 2002. There may be a few more installments, but if there are, I'm not personally aware of them. Now, all of these films have the same private detective character who is played by the same lead actor, Masatoshi Nagase. However, these films have different stories and can be viewed in any order, so I'm just reviewing the third one here, since it's one that I've seen recently. Now, the plot for The Trap is as follows. A private detective crosses paths with a masked serial killer who targets women, poisons them, and then leaves their dead bodies in public areas. Now the opening scene shows this killer, and he just strolls right into Yokohama's office, this is private de- privatized office, which is in the same building as a cinema, actually, and asks Mike to find me. And then he shows an old picture of himself, and then pulls off his mask to show a a deformed face. So it's a pretty creepy moment that kind of sets the tone, despite the fact that the usual character intro and fun theme uh, theme tune follow uh, for a few moments after that. You know, this is one of those deliberately paced, atmospheric, creepy thrillers that Japan does well. I've been covering a handful of these kinds of films lately, so here's another one for you. Now, there are some strange characters in this film. Seriously strange, which includes this murderer who uses a syringe to, like, incapacitate his victims. And his family, which consists of a deranged factory worker and her handicapped brother. Now, I like the dynamic within this family. There's some backstory and development that occurs during the second half of the film that I found pretty interesting. It's a bit odd, but in a good way. Another neat thing is that Masatoshi Nagase plays two different roles in the film. He plays our private eye main character, protagonist, as well as the handicapped man within the strange criminal family. And this really adds to the weirdness of things. This is kind of a weird flick, because you're not really sure if these guys are related. You know, is this handicapped guy like a a long-lost twin brother of the detective? Is he a guy who just looks similar, who's played by the same actor? Uh, Is he an unexplained doppelganger or something, or something else? And you don't really know, and your brain's kind of working throughout the film, like, what is this? What's going on here? In fact, you may need to watch the film multiple times in order to process all of the details. It's pretty thought-provoking and engaging to watch. You know, it's kind of a mystery, slow-burn thriller hybrid. I'm even still, I'm a bit hazy on a few details myself, because I've only seen the film twice over the, the course of like 10 years, so I'd probably have to watch it a few more times to, to nail down the remaining stuff I'm still confused on. But if you're familiar with some of the other films in the Mike Yokohama franchise, you may notice a few other interesting uh, details here. Like, for example, the, the door lady at the cinema has a history of charging people at the door and entrance fee to watch a movie, even if they're only going up the stairs to go to the detective office. You know, she kind of hassles people and, and tries to get some money from them. But in this film, the serial killer slips by her <laughs> unnoticed. So there's like little little details like that you'll pick up that are little nuances between the films. The finale is very unique for a film of this type. It involves the detective's girlfriend, who's a mute. And that plays into the scene. It's pretty neat stuff. Now this was directed by Kaizo Hayashi who has a very interesting filmography. You know, he previously directed To Sleep So As To Dream, Circus Boys, and Zipang, all of which are very good movies. He also directed the first two installments of this Mike Yokohama franchise, but he did not return for the fourth installment. I think uh, Shinji Aoyama took over and directed A Force With No Name. Hayashi's career has really stalled in recent years. He hasn't made much, which is very unfortunate because his movies are very different from typical genre fare. But at least we still have his earlier stuff to enjoy. Now Masatoshi Nagase basically owns this role. This is his franchise and he's great in it. 
he can bounce effortlessly between you know the darker and the lighter tones in these films which is important for this franchise because the tone does shift a little bit if you like slow burn odd Jap japanese thrillers kind of weird check out the trap i think it's a good flick it's available on region one dvd with english subtitles this is my personal favorite of the Mike Yokohama films, at least the four that I have seen. I'll probably talk about the others when I do another movie collection update video since I recently purchased the other three uh, to add to my collection. So I got, I got all four of the theatrical films. And as always, I'll see you next time.